was a village that had gotten taken over by the Taliban. And, you know, this, that, that happens frequently. But what was important about this village was the, so had the, the mayor or the provincial governor had familial ties to Karzai. So they sent in America troops, American troops to take the town back. So there was no, there was no fob, there was no cop. It was like a town. Um, and they, they came in, seized some important buildings that were running operations out of buildings. And one of them was a, was a girl's school next to a river. It was like an L shaped building next to a river. And this had been, they, they had seized the, the army had seized territory and, and seized a foothold and fortified. I think it was two buildings in this town. Uh, and they pushed everyone outside the town, but, uh, they had a lot of issues with snipers in the area. Oh, okay. So, uh, Tony, Tony Rios, I think was one of the first guys to go in to help him out. And then Clint and I were like the, the backfill. They couldn't, they couldn't solve the snipers. They had to rotate dudes out. So Clint and I got flown in at night and the, the town was called Barge Matal. Um, so we show up there hey, we're in big old rucksacks and we stayed there for about a month. Wow. Yeah, it was, a, yeah, it was, um, it was a long, I thought it was a long time to be living out of a, a girl's school. Um, we show up there uh, and then, and then you get three lines of cast every day. And, and, and this was like, this was the hot spot at the time or the, the month or whatever. Mm -hmm. So they brought in, I don't know if they were part of, Dev grew officially, but they brought in some seals. Um, they had a they had a PJ with them. Okay. Uh, and they just showed up one day and they're like, "Hey, um, we're going to be doing our own thing at night, but we're going to sleep here during the day." Sure enough, like <laughs> at, at night they would walk out the front gate and they would. I, I was told I never really interacted with. It. I talked to their JTAC a little bit, but um, they would like hide in houses and try to like ambush folks, and then they would come back and sleep during the day huh. uh we'd, we'd get it yeah it was, it was um a little surreal i'm like what yeah they had they had mp7s and uh all sorts of crazy gucci gear um they had man and we were talking about that general dynamic laptop that really yep. small one and they weren't using it the jtac wasn't used so he let us use it, it had falcon view on it and we we got flown in um some sort of uh, acoustic uh, micro uh, device that that could hear the shots and triangulate where the shot for the snipers. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we would when we somehow plug that into the, or we would get the readout and it'd give a range and bearing from where it was at. I would plot those throughout the day, the range and bearings to where we're all we're hearing all these sniper shots, and then you know I'd get like a general area, and then when the cast would check on, we just you know tr we try to find the guy right, but they they use all sorts of cover and concealment. So it would just bomb the hell out of these hillsides. And it was surrounded on all four sides of these huge mountains. So we're just dropping bombs all day on all these hillsides. Nice. Yeah, it was cool. Um, yeah, we spent 30 days there. Uh, we had put tarps all along. There was a hallway. And we were sleeping in the rooms. But we had hang tarps up on the hall so the snipers couldn't see us walking to and forward. But they'd still take pot shots and... They got almost got one of the seals that hit like a post behind them and exploded the wood. And <laughs> we're all laughing. God, that had to be nerve funny. wracking, man. Yeah. For like a month, you're just like, uh, you don't even know when they're gonna shoot. Or, I mean, just the yeah. whole time it was like yeah. that. Yeah. You wouldn't. You wouldn't go. You wouldn't go in the open. Yeah. You would. You'd like. Yeah. You'd have to stay behind the tarps. That was it. And oh, Jeez. that's the funniest part. So like, um, <laughs> there's the. They had a bathroom, but they don't have bathrooms in Afghanistan. It's literally stalls with holes in the floor sure and, yeah so yeah. <laughs> but there was a there was a gap um that was open between where we were kind of obscured from the sniper to the building but there's a wide open space that you had you had to literally like run in between or you'd get to, to take a sh so um Jeez. yeah for, for for a month um <laughs> god yeah we would we'd get rocketed all the time um rpgs you get and snipers were the worst thing because you'd never know sure um but the the pj who was with that seal team we were getting shot at one day and he was like i don't know what he was doing but he had his suppressed weapon and he was 
sitting behind some cover out in the open. He's like, oh, I think I see him. He's just dumping shots in the Still mountain shooting. side with his, yeah, with his M4. I'm like, I don't know, man. Uh, <clears throat> and it, but, uh, it didn't stop after that, I assume. No, no, he, he didn't, uh, he didn't have an effect surprisingly. <laughs> yeah. But, but they had, they had little, um, fighting positions on either side. And, you know, if you got bored while you're there, cause you, you know, you're not going anywhere. Right. So you kind of sit in the fighting positions and you'd, you'd have a spotting scope and see if you can see anything. And one of the, and one of the army guys, uh, he's like, Oh, I think I see him. I was like, man, you're full of shit, dude. Yeah. <sighs> Big old explosion next to the sandbag next to him. He's like, yep, I got him now. The, the army dude didn't even move. Had a huge explosion in the sandbag right next to him. He didn't even flinch. He's like, what is it? A sniper bullet? Yeah. Hit- yeah, oh, okay. sniper, yeah. I was like, Whoa. he's like, oh, I got him. I got him Jeez. now. He's <laughs> a steely eyed killer, man. Yeah. Good like, Lord. Geez, man. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck, man? Do you guys uh, take him out? You never know. You never know. Oh, they, okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't even think he had a gun. I think he just had a spotting scope and was like looking for him. It, it was oh, very okay. surreal. That's um, crazy. They brought in uh, Latvian JTACs. They brought in Latvian snipers to do like counter sniper stuff. Um, I told you one of the one of the Latvians got shot. He got he, as he was getting medevaced. His buddy was laying down suppressive fire in some random direction. He got yeah. shot in the ass. Oh my god! Came out his dick. So he got. Oh, that's he right. Got, yeah, he got. Oh. He got put back on the. He got put back on the helo with his buddy. Uh, people are just screaming. Oh, oh no, no, yeah, it was, uh, yep, yeah. I, I, sorry. Let me back up. <laughs> <clears throat> we're we were just sitting in the fighting position. I'm on the spotting scope, looking. I don't see anything. I don't know what I'm looking for either. I'm just looking because sure. I'm bored. Yeah. Uh, Dan, the Latvian JTAC, takes my spot in the fighting position and is looking. And you just hear a shot and you hear Dan screaming. He was the guy who got shot, broke his, got shot in the collarbone. So we're medevacking him out. And that's when his buddy was laying down you know, fire and got shot. Laying down fire. He got shot in the ass. Jeez. And then it was, it was madness. And you'd, you'd hear it cause you'd have interpreters with you and they would tune into the Taliban's channel and you can hear them um, talking about overrunning you or having fire bombs or mortars or uh, real coreless rockets shooting at you. So. It was wild. Um, it had to be, like I said, it had to be just nerve wracking, just like on edge all the time. Like, you know, cause you don't know, I mean, yeah, it could be BS or it could be real. You don't know. So you have to take everything seriously. I mean, man, yeah. man. You, you, and you felt really confined. Like you didn't want to go out in the open cause you thought you were going to get shot. Um, sure. and people did get shot. Um, and, but there was a unit, the guy owns, I try, I reached out to him when I had Instagram, he has a t-shirt company. I don't know his name. I don't know who he was, but I know that he was part of a platoon that got brought in there to help do missions at night as well, kind of offset the seals. Um, everyone in that platoon had a purple heart and everyone uh, would not leave their sleeping quarters without putting on their uh, ballistic vest. I, was, I wouldn't do that, but they, they wouldn't. I mean, they always kind of stuck with me, but um, yeah. Anyway, yeah, it was a it was a trip for for thirty days. You're just like trying to trying to kill these dudes, these snipers in the hills and stuff like that. Eventually, we just left. I don't know if we got them or not. We just packed up everything. Well, I mean, and it, left. unless you just carpet bomb that whole area, there's really nothing you can do. I mean, th- those guys have the advantage of, you know, just taking a shot and then moving and taking a shot. Yeah. You'd never find out where they yeah. were. Yeah, and they they could yeah they could see shadows through the tarps and they knew where you were. You didn't move. Um, right. So. We did actually carpet bomb the place when we left. 